Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for the week ending Friday, March 22nd, 2019. I want to go over the charts of the broad markets, uh, and we'll cover a few other things. This, this video will be uh, somewhat of a recap to the video I published earlier today for members of the site. That one included commodities, trade ideas, uh, treasuries, and some other things. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on treasuries today, maybe even um, the financials, typically bonds and sector analysis. That's uh, subscriber only content but what happened what's going on in the financials and the treasuries uh, directly impacts the market I believe so we'll, we'll, we'll cover that as sort of general market analysis in this video and then on a, a related note I will communicate out uh, it's been a while uh, we expected to have the, the registration process opened um, a while ago on the site um, had some delays with developers working you know just adding some customizations to the site but either way I will try to get a, an email out today for those of you on the waiting list uh, for right side of the chart with details and uh, hopefully we can get uh, at least uh, uh, some of the memberships opened uh, by maybe as early as next week so uh, all right let's uh, go ahead and take a look at what happened today and uh, again I guess what didn't happen as well um, this is a weekly chart um, you can see that we had a nice, when you look at this candle, uh, you can see a nice uh, intra-week gain above, but then we close back down. These candles are set to show the, um, the, the net value. In other words, if it's a red candle, it means it closed the week uh, lower than where the previous candle closed. So you can see uh, what's happened is, uh, again, as I've been talking about, the bigger picture is this. This is now four consecutive weeks. Of, of testing and failing to take out that critical, that key long-term uh, resistance level. And again, that is defined by the reaction highs from the rally last, or the uh, correction, I should say, on the kickback rallies. That's where the market failed each and every time, very significant level, at least in my book. Uh, that has been, uh, this level has been since, you know, the end of last year, my max bounce target. And so far, the market has not been able to make it through there. And you can see even back then, remember, we had a, a big correction back in early 2018. And uh, after the first leg down, that's also where that uh, kickback rally failed. So technically, it's very significant, in my opinion, at least. Um, so that's that, and again, the PPO 9 EMA, which does a pretty good job of defining the primary trends. Uh, that's the signal line on your PPO. When it's below zero, the white line, the trend is bearish. And it's told you, you know, back here. Again, this is a weekly chart. It said, you know, get out of the market here, uh, trend or be short. And there were two big power, you know, two big drops there, nice shorting ops. And uh, the only other time that that signal line has uh, not been on a buy signal for years now, many years, is right here. It crossed down below and it's still below that level. And as I often say, that zero line, which denotes, you know, bearish or bullish trend when the when the 9EMA is above or below, it often acts as uh, resistance when tested from below or support when tested from above and so far we're coming up on it so uh, as of now and again this is just one of many trend indicators trend indicators can come on all time frames short term medium or intermediate term long term this is an intermediate term trend indicator right here and it has been bearish since then and remains there so you have a couple things happening this week you have the fourth failure uh, at that resistance level, failure to take it out, but more so than the previous four. Uh, and I'm going to give this one to the Bears. Yes, that's that camp I'm in, and you can call it confirmation bias, call it what you want. I'll tell you why the Bears get a check mark this week, even though, for you know, all intents and purposes, we're still basically testing that level. We're just below it. We haven't, we didn't close the week very far below it relatively speaking you know the you know the bears still want to see those recent candles get taken out right there the bulls want to see a solid green candlestick weekly and so i think three lessons uh, could be taken from this week's trading action all three i laid out earlier in the week and that is number one first and foremost you know, my focus at least has been on the weekly charts because of the significance of this level. And that's where I've moved out a few weeks ago, focusing, stating that I, my only concern was a weekly 
where we close weekly, any of these weekly candles. Um, we did have a big red one down here. It looked like it could, had some promise to, to have some follow through, but we didn't get it. It was followed by a green candle. Uh, so we didn't have any confirmation on that bearish engulfing. Confirmation would have come on a you know follow up red candle, especially too. Uh, so we closed back above it. Now this week, uh, why I give this check mark to the bears uh, is we had a pretty, pretty um, convincing, if you will, I guess to who? Not convincing to me, but to the, you know, some people this might have been a convincing breakout above that support level. But again, so the three takeaways were number one, as I said, all that matters to me at least is a how we close on a weekly closing basis. Intraweek is just noise. And so that's number one. And that would have, um, you know, prevented or maybe give you a second thoughts on, on going long, uh, thinking that the S&P 500 has taken out that key resistance level. Because again, it took it out intra week, but it failed to close above it on an, a weekly closing basis, meaning today. So that's number one. The other thing, probably as important, I've said this before, and I say it every time there's a market moving FOMC meeting. Not all FOMC meetings are, are, are market moving. This one was. We knew going in and we knew, you know, after. Uh, the, the FOC rate announcement came out at uh, 2 p.m. on Wednesday. They decided uh, not to cut rates. That was widely expected. No surprise there. But um, they came out full on dovish. So again, if you recall, at the end, heading into the end of the year last year, just not so long ago, their, the dot plot, their expected trajectory rate hikes called for three rate hikes in 2019. So they've gone from three to now, as of yesterday, zero. And the market, although the Fed didn't say it, the market is betting that the next cut, I am too, will be to the downside or the next rate decision. So that's a complete 180 and you can see that uh you know there's there's always two camps to the market and they're those that are bullish and will hear what they want to hear and and take it the way they want and so they heard it the uh, fed's continued policy of easy money keeping the money spigot open rates low uh they bought stocks yesterday right after in the wake of the fomc meeting which again in my opinion uh even if we had gone down yesterday um that still i would have been skeptical of it so uh, you know trying to read anything into uh you know a, a, a post fomc meeting a big market moving meeting uh in my opinion is a mistake also trying to in infer anything from an intraweek uh, you know intraweek movements in the market instead of a weekly at this point was a big no no and then finally and again this is just me i don't take breakouts on stocks or the market or a sector that occur uh with these two conditions overbought which we were right here the second one and negative divergence so uh, overbought and negative divergence to me equals a very high probability easily over 90 percent that a breakout will fail any breakout that does occur with negative divergence while overbought uh, so they don't all but uh they fail enough that uh that's that's the three strikes so uh those are three reasons that uh you know, yesterday really didn't mean much. Technically, I was on, you know, taking time off yesterday. Um, so I didn't really do a end of day update. And again, I stated ahead of time, just wait to see what happens for the week, uh, how the week closes. And so to go back to that now, so the reason I do give it a check mark for the bears, uh, even though if you look at yesterday's candle and then today's candle, you say, okay, well, up yesterday, down today, so it's a wash. And we closed, even though we closed back below that level, um, Again, for all intents and purposes, especially on the weekly chart, we're still around there. But what did happen is that we got pretty far away. That was a pretty big green candle here. We broke out back here. When was that? What day of the week was that? Uh, Monday. And we traded above that level every day. See that same line. So we had a breakout, went up, back tested, and then a big green candle. Uh, so to, I'm sure, many... This looked like the real deal. It looked like, okay, the SPY has now broken out. We back tested. We put that level in the rear view mirror. But again, for those three X's that I said, mm -mm, that's my, my logic now. So uh, I, I think one would have a hard time arguing what I said, that uh, those that were bullish took the Fed's you know, comments of, you know, going extremely dovish, keeping the spigot open for a while now, at least for the foreseeable fewer future, they bought. They bought into that. And uh, now with today's big move down, almost a 2% drop, that's one of the biggest drops all year. Um, the 2% drop in, in SPY, we had, what, a 3.5% or so downside on, uh, you know, over 3.64 on IWM. 
I believe that was the biggest drop all year. Um, so what, what this is, technically, that is a bull trap, a.k.a. a failed or false breakout. And as I say, fewer things in trading or investing are more bearish than a failed breakout. Now look, we've had some whipsaws. We had some things. We had some, you know, we had a bearish engulfing candle there on the daily. It looked like it was confirmed, uh, but it didn't play out for anything more than that. So if nothing else, I can sit here and talk all day long. Uh, we can call it a stalemate if you want to, because we're still at that level. And that's the way I look at this. We're still, we need to now definitively break out of this recent trading range. So bulls want to see this, bears want to see that. Based on what happened today, just because we've had some whipsaw signals doesn't mean technical analysis stops working. So I'm going to take today's price action, the very impulsive move down, and some other things I'm going to get to here in a second in this video to say uh, I'm giving this one a pretty pretty hefty check mark for the bears uh, with what happened today, especially in light of what happened in, in the previous days. So that's the S&P 500. Um, there's the divergences, everything else I mentioned. Let's look at a couple other things. Oh, and before we leave that, let me give you one more lesson. So the three, again, the three takeaways, the weekly, wait for weekly close when you're focusing on the weekly charts, if that's what you're doing. That's what I was doing. Uh, don't chase, you know, don't take breakouts that have negative divergence and are overbought. Uh, and then also, take any and everything that happens right up to and especially after an FOMC meeting with a big grain of salt because the initial reaction very often is not the lasting reaction. So those are lessons. The other thing, and this is just a little pet peeve I've had for years, uh, you know, you can go Google this term. Uh, you'll hear traders say, trade what you see, not what you think. Well, you know, the reason I'm not chasing longs here and the reason I'm, you know, um, been, you know, still leaning towards the bear side, expecting more downside. It's because what I think, because of everything that's gone on, all the analysis I've talked about, where we are in the business cycle, everything else. If you trade, if you go by that mantra, trade what you see, then you bought this breakout and you certainly bought it after or on the back test. Number two, you bought the breakout, the back test. And if you trade what you see, I don't see why you didn't go long yesterday on that big green candle. So to me, you know, looking at, uh, that's the reason I'll pass on some breakouts. Um, certain breakouts look impressive and convincing. Breakouts to new highs on face value on a stock or a sector is, are always bullish because when a stock or a, uh, the indexes break out to all-time highs, not that we've done that yet, but just for an example in technical analysis, that's bullish because everybody that buys at that point or owns a stock that's broken out to new highs, everybody's profitable nobody's underwater. When a stock is at a 52 week or especially an all time low, everybody's underwater. Uh, so when you break to a new low, that's usually bearish. But again, that's face value. That's what you see. It's these other things that come into play. And that's where, you know, a trader has to have, in my opinion, an opinion, uh, uh, you know, thoughts on what might happen. And therefore, you can avoid some breakouts and uh, take others. So Okay, one of the many things factoring into my analysis, and I pointed that out uh, as I've been half working this week because of those same factors, the FOMC announcement this week, not a good week to trade because you're going to get, it's full of whipsaw signals, as I've often said. Um, my kids were on spring break, so I just took some time off. But uh, So I can't remember if I covered this in the last video or not. Um, I know I've shared it on the site quite a bit recently, but this is a very important level for TLT. Uh, TLT or your long-term treasury bonds and uh, I have a lot of lines here but we'll call that about 122.50 you can see it just doing a phenomenal job of acting as support back here support once broken then you had a big sell-off and then every other kickback rally with one little whipsaw signal there that is a whipsaw signal false breakout but uh, that's fine when you have you know, half dozen or more failures at that level, it is certainly very valid. So again, I pointed out the other day, we popped slightly above it, um, but today's move was very impulsive. We clearly put that previous reaction high in the rearview mirror, like I said, we'd need to see. I've added some levels here. So where am I going with this? Well, two things. Number one, this is technically a breakout in Treasury bonds, which is bullish. Um, you might say, and I think somebody might have said it on the site, well, Randy, that's good. Lower rates and bullish from the economy. No, not, not always, not always. Um, treasury bonds go up for one of two reasons or both. 
a flight to safety uh, asset, which I think this is, institutions moving money into treasury bonds, the safety of treasury bonds out of equities. Uh, smart money, you often see moves in treasuries precede uh, a drop in the stock market as the smart money stealthily distributes, you know, at, at market tops uh, and, and distributes equities, that is, sells into the strength of retail buying and then moves into treasuries. Um, and the other thing, of course, is uh, expectations of slower uh, economic growth um, and or inflation those go hand in hand so uh, that's what will happen because when when uh, market participants think that the economy is going to slow down they're going to say well inflation will go down and or interest rates should fall which they will so uh, what you're looking at here keep in mind TLT is bond prices they move opposite when rates go down bonds go up so this was a uh, drop in rates long-term rates this is going to trigger that yield curve uh, in, inversion that uh, I and so many have been talked about if we go anymore. If we continue to uh, go up on TLT, down on, on rates, the long-term bond rates, uh, you will see the inversion of the yield curve, as I've talked about in recent videos. Uh, all seven of the previous recessions were all preceded by uh, inverted yield curves, so a 0% failure rate there. Um, then the bigger picture on Treasuries, Again, I've harped on this in, in videos for going back since last year. This is my long-term chart on TLT and why I've been you know, bullish in most of the long treasuries since really last fall. Uh, you have This is a primary uptrend line. This was significant when it was broken. It was bearish. You can see here, this is you know, technical analysis works the same on bonds as it does stocks. These are, these are the big trends I look for. The divergent highs, swing the trends, divergent lows. Uh, so you can see a divergent high uh, and it marked the top of that... Uh, that trend, that uptrend there, followed by a downtrend. Another divergent high, again, on the on the significant weekly chart. And then at this point, you broke support. So you can see here, there's that 122.50-ish, 60-ish level, same level that I was watching for a breakout. And boom, big impulsive green weekly candlestick above it, solid close above it. Check, check, check. So uh, even before we broke out of this wedge um, last last end of last year, I had this scenario right here. Come up, hit that resistance, come down back test, and then once we break above it, clear skies up to about 128.56 and or back test of that uh, primary uptrend line. So, uh, you know, unless this breakout fails, anything's possible. I see more upside in treasuries. What would cause such a big move? That would be a pretty sizable move in treasury bonds. Um, well, one of two things or both. Again, a flight to safety, institutions moving money out of equities into uh, the safety of treasury bonds and or uh, slowing growth expectations. So uh, that is not good for the stock market no matter how light, low rates go. You know, falling and low rates work great when the economy is growing and that's what's happened for the last 10 years. The Fed's kept the pedal on the metal even though the economy was growing. But uh, they, they can't stave off a, a recession forever. Uh, low rates only you know, carry, carry things so far. And again, it's FL, uh, XLF, this is the financial sector ETF. So this has all your big mega banks, your JP Morgan, Citigroup, all those, as well as some big insurance companies, uh, I think, you know, any, any financial companies. And, you know, to me, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty clear. This is, you know, financials are in and have been in a bear market for a long time. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to hit on this in a second. You know, they topped back in, uh, in 2007. I think it was about six months or so before the stock market topped. And so what happens is tech is high growth. Tech is where the profits are. And that's what everyone's been chasing. The big fang stocks, XLK, Apple, Amazon, um, Alphabet. Um, but just like back then, you know, the financials, uh, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. This isn't a debate that you can argue. They're in a bear market. If you look at where they are, let me just turn these, uh, uh, this off. So the financial sector topped back in the start of, in January of 2018, uh, like quite a few other sectors. They dropped from there uh, 27%. And to this day, as of today, they're still down 16%. That is a bear market. You can try to spin it any way you want. It is a, I will say this, it is a cyclical bear market within a larger secular bull market. This is your secular bull market here, and this was a bear market. This is a bear market. 
a million dollar question is this one over um, you know it could continue from from here it could rise and go up but I want to say this is you know we're 10 years into one of the longest economic expansions and the biggest bull markets in history this isn't going to go on forever and again I've talked about that and that's you know we each have our opinions on how far this thing will go but you cannot argue that uh, the financials are not in a bear market and the price action that we've seen this week let me turn those uh, these, this back on uh, remember my PPO indicator I always talk about well told you bear market here bear market here with the white line the signal line below and bear market here PPO is rolling over turning down below the zero line um, so you can see there's only been you know a few times uh, in this bull market off the 09 lows that it said get out and stay out of the financials and it's still telling you that right now um, here I can go back a little longer in time show you real quick that the financials topped back long before the stock market we had about a double top right here in February of 07 then it double topped back here about the same level in, in June uh, so really that's about where we peaked in February although technically the top came in May or so right there and the stock market itself didn't top until October of 2007 right about here so uh, that's you know the financials are one of the most important sectors one of the largest sectors in the S&P 500 and let's just look at the um, let's look at what's going on in the daily chart you can see XLF you know everything was clearly in place the divergence a lot like S&P 500 right now negative divergence on the daily time frame but you look at this this uh, selling lately and again I you know I attributed the the cause is um, you know the flattening yield curve banks make money on spreads loaning money out take giving you squat on your checking and money market and CDs 1% or so turning around lending that money out at you know five six seven eight percent or more car loans credit card loans they don't make money when the yield curve flattens it hits them hard um, you can see what's happening the price action so far since we put in this divergent high this is a big drop in the financials this is not bull market correction action this like back here and here and here again we've been in a bear market this is what you see in a bear market these are bear market rallies um, and again like I showed you just based on where we've dropped and, and you know how, how long we peaked and how far we are below there we're still in a bear market and so therefore just like the stock market I believe this is a bear market rally you can't argue that these were bear that these weren't bear market rallies because you can see they were faded and again we didn't just have a healthy correction we've had quick impulsive selling so this is a red flag for the markets um, KRE uh, is even worse these are your regional banks this thing's falling off a cliff in the last what is that four days the regional bank and this is an ETF this isn't any one regional bank uh, this is a diversified ETF and it's dropped over 12 percent in just the last four trading sessions uh, the regionals very much so still in a bear market off the highs uh, right here they are down if I can grab that level up top there it is they are down as of today 20 almost 26 percent after falling as much as uh, 33 percent and so based on the look of this impulsive selling this doesn't look like a correction it looks more like a uh, the next leg down in a uh, bear market with this just being a uh, you know run-of-the-mill bear market rally improper choice word. I shouldn't say run of the mill um, but it is well within the norm especially when you look at retracements everything else like that it was a, a certainly a powerful bear market rally okay on that note I just want to leave you with one more you know analogy or, or comparison that I like to use um, only because I've, I've just you know an, an incredible amount of it seems the vast majority are convinced that the the bounce that we've had off the lows uh, in uh, December 20 or the 24th of December are just too powerful breath is too strong the gains are too strong to be a bear market rally um, despite the fact that we haven't taken out the, the previous highs well again there's so much here in this chart I don't have it fully marked up you can see the divergences here other things this is the Nasdaq composite and you can see uh, this goes back into the early 90s and uh, you know given similar analogies but a point I want to make here is uh, over the past several decades um, we've had uh, two bear markets 
uh, two clear bear markets. This doesn't look like much, but it was a over you know 55 plus percent drop. This one was even a lot more than that. Nasdaq, remember, got hit hard because it had a lot of the dot coms in there and stuff. But uh, what I want to show you here, we'll turn off the uh, lines real quick. Let's see here's our most recent wedge breakdown. But uh, oh no, I need to turn them on because I had the numbers right: 41 percent, 18 percent, and almost 27 percent. What is that? Well, what I did is I measured the uh, from the lows to highs, the initial kickback rally. And I've done this in recent videos on S&P 500, QQQ. So right there, from this low at this point here, I'll use an arrow tool so you can see. That's our initial leg down. Uh, grab this one here. Up to that high, that was 41%. Okay, now this one was only 18. What is, what's my takeaway? Well, everything is relative in, in trading and chart patterns uh, just like in nature everything is relative to the magnitude of the preceding move if you have an earthquake and it's I don't know the I don't I live in Florida so you guys out in California know the Richter scale better than me but let's say it's a you know 7.0 whatever is way up there the aftershocks are going to be bigger typically on that than a little minor earthquake okay and so with the stock market Remember, this was the biggest bull market in history right here, the, the dot-com bubble, everything leading up to there. And um, you can see that move. So you had such an enormous run-up. Therefore, the magnitude of the bear market, including that initial kickback rally, was much larger than what we saw in 2007. Most of you, a lot of you might not have been alive or at least trading back then. Um, I was and back here as well. But this was as powerful as that bull market was from 2002 up to the 07 highs. It, it paled in comparison to this or this one. So therefore, that 18% kickback rally, if a lot of people are saying, well, wow, we've gone up almost 27% off the lows on the NASDAQ. And that's, again, from the lows to the highs yesterday I measured it. Um, just trying to put in perspective that you know that we could go up even more than that based on the scope of this pattern and still very much um, keep that into the uh, norm if you will don't know what happened to the chart there so that's that I'll leave it at that and again I've spent a lot of time you know so maybe if you watch my videos we're all beating a dead horse just trying to make the case that 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 is possible and at the end of the day uh, maybe it is uh, not a bear market rally. Maybe this was just a correction, uh, as this one was. Although back then, of course, we had two legs down. Very rare to get a big drop like that and not retest those lows. Let me just say that now. But uh, at the end of the day, let's just take it one week at a time right now. And uh, that is looking at the S&P 500. Uh, which is probably the most important you know, index out there, most diversified, and see what happens around this level. Uh, and uh, some of these trend indicators as well. I'm going to leave it here. Uh, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed and have a great weekend.